Steele? Uh, Steele, but it's just one sixteen. Yeah, yeah, eighteen. Eighteen. Just that's barely a, enough. That's a great song. Yeah. Yeah. We are somebody. Yeah, the, uh, here's one. Yeah, here's one. Now we can get started. Yeah. 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 All right. The uh, Cuyahoga County Council work session. Um, for Tuesday, April the 24th. Uh, is called to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Calling the roll, Mr. Gallagher. Here. Mr. Schron. Here. Ms. Conwell. Here. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones is absent at the moment. Ms. Brown. Ms. Brown is absent at the moment. Mr. Hauser. Mr. Hauser is absent at the moment. Ms. Simon. Ms. Simon is absent at the moment. Ms. Baker. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Tuma. Here. And Council President Brady. Here. You have a quorum. All righty. <laughs> you got to hang it. Represent the east side. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what, what side of town do you think I live on? <laughs> 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 How are you? There you go. Uh, well, see, he's got you there. Um, all right. Uh, any public comment? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Lou Vittantonio. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the time and opportunity. Um, I know that uh, this is prior to your council meeting. Uh, this is a work session, and I just would like to thank not only uh, Council President uh, Brady and also uh, Mr. Miller for taking the time uh, to sit with us and, and, and discuss some of the legislation that's coming up in, uh, this evening uh, regarding the Consumer uh, Protection uh, Division for the county. I uh, appreciate you lending a you know, your time and, and, and letting us explain what our concerns were uh, and being open to them. Um, the only thing I'm asking today is, uh, and, and I guess we'll do here and then and, and potentially later, is uh, if there's any opportunity to uh, have uh, some language inserted where there's a potential for um, automotive complaints that are coming into the county's uh, protection bureau that can be forwarded to our established program with the Attorney General's office um, that would be uh, beneficial to us to keep it consistent with what we've been doing. And I, I actually had to go look back. I've been with the association for 22 years. Um, so we're, we're talking 96 and we're going back to multitudes of AG's offices that we've had this program uh, with. It actually was established, the AutoCap program was established. AutoCap is the ability for consumers to file complaints against you know, motor vehicle dealers. And it's been, it was established in 1974. I actually found a, a manual in our office from back that far. And it was a national program that we adopted in the state of Ohio and what we call the state of Cleveland because we are a state uh, based on the National Auto Dealers Association. Um, so at this point, again, I'm, all I'm asking for is, is, is the council's consideration and in, in inserting that language that we've shared uh, and if you have any questions for me, please let me know. Okay. Thank you for the time. I do appreciate it. Any other public comment? No, Mr. President. All right. Well, we're here in a work session today to discuss the consumer affairs legislation. And we're going to have uh, our own um, uh, staff person, Mike King, come up. Um, the, um, uh, as uh, the witness, uh, as, as, the, as, as, we, as was just testified, um, uh, Councilman uh, Miller and I, probably because of our relationship with people in Columbus some years ago, um, were uh, asked to sit down with um, with uh, the Ohio uh, Dealers Association from Columbus. We met with them and some people locally as well to go over their concerns and also uh, with the GCP to go over some of, of their concerns and those have resulted uh, in what I'm proposing uh, is um, uh, for four amendments to the legislation as it exists. This was passed out of Councilwoman Simon's uh, uh, committee, and so this, is, uh, this would be a substitute that uh, amends, amends that. And so we're gonna have Mike speak to that, and then we're gonna have, uh, I believe, Councilman Sean speak to uh, uh, a, an amendment uh, or a discussion that he would like to have um, on this legislation. So, Mike. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and as has been stated, uh, we're here to, today to discuss um, a piece of legislation. It's actually two pieces of uh, two ordinances that were introduced uh, by the Department of Consumer Affairs and heard in the Education, Environment, and Sustainability Committee. Only one of those ordinances is really the, the meat of the discussion today, um, and that's the consumer affairs side. The other one deals with weights and measures, and it's a companion piece, but it's it's still related. Um, the uh, So the... Both ordinances were unanimously recommended for adoption by committee, um, but however, following that committee, some questions were raised separately by regional and state auto dealers as well as the GCP, Greater Cleveland Partnership, and um, as has been said, council leadership and staff met with each group separately to better understand their concerns and drafted the proposed substitute uh, before you today. Uh, as a quick refresher, for those of you who didn't attend or were, not, were unable to attend the committee hearing, uh, this legislation basically codifies some of the key elements of the state's Consumer Sales Practices Act, or CSPA as I may refer to it, um, and codifies those in the county law. The CSPA prohibits unfair deceptive sales pra trade practices as well as unconscionable sales acts or practices and is generally under state law enforced by the Ohio Attorney General. Uh, the ordinances introduced uh, by the administration generally mirror state law with a few minor exceptions and allow the county to step in and assist consumers in resolving issues where the Ohio Attorney General lacks the time or resources to respond. Uh, before we get into the substance of the proposed substitute, I'd like to emphasize that Director, both Director Harris and uh, Law, Assistant Law Director Todd Ellsworth have been very helpful in this process. Uh, they've worked closely with us, and they both believe that these amendments meet the legal and operational needs of the Department of Consumer Affairs. They're both here and available to answer questions that may come up. Um, so getting into the proposed substitute itself, uh, the substitute includes the following. First, the First Amendment uh, am amends the uh, language dealing with the statute of limitations, and currently the ordinance provides that a complaint can be filed by a county consumer either within two years of an alleged violation of the CSPA or within a reasonable time after the consumer knows or should have known that the violation occurred. Uh, state law simply puts a limit at two years. It doesn't include the reasonable time period. And after discussion with the uh, various groups, um, it was recommended that the county ordinances just directly mirror state law. So in that sense, we're, we're basically just going with what the CSPA currently provides. Second, the ordinance's enforcement authority would be transferred from the Director of Consumer Affairs to the county executive. This wouldn't alter operations of the county as we expect the county executive will typically act through the Department of Consumer Affairs, but because the county executive represents one of the largest constituencies in the state of Ohio outside of statewide elected offices, uh, there's more direct accountability when en enforcement actions are initiated. Third, the substitute would add language limiting the county's ability to bring an action seeking civil penalties where the Ohio Attorney General has brought such an action under state law. This change would address concerns about uh, potential double jeopardy, quote unquote, where a business or supplier could be penalized twice, once by the state, once by the county, for the same underlying conduct. Um, as Director Harris stated in committee, it's not the county's intent to pile on where the Ohio Attorney General has initiated an investigation, but rather to supplement the Attorney General's efforts. So um, if the Attorney General has brought a, an action seeking civil penalties, the county will not seek civil penalties on its own. And then finally, the substitute adds the CSPA's uh, what's called the bona fide errors defense, and this is also known as sort of a safe harbor provision. It provides that if a, a uh, business is acting in good faith and they're either working to make the consumer whole and have a practice to prevent these types of um, acts or practices, or that they're uh, meeting the requirements of either Federal Trade Commission or state uh, trade laws uh, that are mandated, that they are not subject to civil penalties um, or attorney's fees beyond what um, beyond making the consumer whole. So if they make a mistake in good faith, they, they're still required to make the consumer whole, but they're not subject to any penalties beyond that. Um, again, this is consistent with the approach Director Harris stated, made clear in committee that it's not in the county's interest to really you know pile on um, when respond when businesses are acting responsibly to correct mistakes. So that, that's basically the substance of the amendment. Um, one quick reminder before we open it up for questions. Um, this meeting was scheduled uh, to discuss this item, but since it was never technically sent back to committee, that's why this is a work session, uh, any amendments that will be considered uh, will be formally considered at the regular council meeting at 5 o'clock. So there won't be a vote in this meeting, but since um, 
you know, th there are some sub substantial changes to the proposed ordinance we wanted to set aside this time so that there could be a discussion before council meeting. So with that, I'd open it up to questions and Sorry. <laughs> now can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Uh, then we'll go, um, uh, hearing no questions, um, we'll go directly to Councilman Schron and, uh, and um, his concerns. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And I think uh, uh, Mr. King had actually done a little bit of uh, putting together drafting of the proposed amendment. And, and all the amendment does is it just builds upon, I believe, uh, what uh, were the amendments that's being presented, with the exception that uh, instead of of um, changing a practice that's been in play for 30 plus years, uh, it is to build upon that, and that says that uh, if there was a uh, an allegation or complaint uh, being brought against the Automobile Dealers Association, uh, as indicated in the. Uh, um, uh, amendment that uh, it would follow the procedures that are currently in place by uh, with the MOU's uh, memorandums of understanding that have been in place for both uh, Democrats and Republicans uh, acting as attorney generals. It's worked fine for 30 years, and uh, that would be the first recourse uh, for the, where we would direct uh, the uh, uh, an action. Uh, this is a controlled body. It is. Uh, uh, under uh, state law controlled and um, just even thinking in terms of of its impact and what it means uh, unlike some other bodies that maybe we're going to be looking at maybe it's uh, payday lending or any other things that we've got some some serious concerns about in regards to that uh, when you talk about uh, the automobile dealers uh, they are a body that uh, not only are they regulated by the state of Ohio, but if you can think in terms of uh, should uh, they violate practices or procedures, uh, their franchise, uh, their rights to sell a Ford Motor Company car, Chevrolet, it's going to be taken away at the corporate head uh, up in DC or in Detroit, and so their risk and their exposure, uh, they want to make sure that they're presenting, uh, I believe, a quality, high-level product. Uh, at all times and representing the brands and the recognition. Uh, we're not talking about used cars, we're talking about just the new car franchises, the new car control, and as we heard uh, uh, earlier in uh, in the uh, opening uh, comments, that this is a uh, highly regulated area that's been working fine. If for some reason uh, we find that that uh, particular action or activity is not working, it can it would come back uh, to the county, but the first step would not be the county. The first step would go uh, under the continuing practice as, uh, uh, as has been working for 30-plus uh, years in, in, the, in the state of Ohio. Um, Councilman, um, uh, is, do we know, does anybody know at this point um, what the nature of this MOU is with the Attorney General? I mean, uh, that would be helpful, I think, if it's if if someone does. It's and how long it's. I mean, I, we just heard it's something that's been there since uh, I, 1974. Which okay. So what I know about the auto cap program, and that's the program that yes. new car dealers go through. So to participate in that program, you have to be an OADA member, a member of the Ohio Auto Dealers Association. It's a voluntary program. Um, so members of that association can voluntarily uh, participate in AutoCAP if there's a complaint. But AutoCAP only deals with new car complaints, complaints about absolute new car purchases. So um, there would be a whole bunch of car purchases that don't necessarily um, fall into that program. Um, and... Uh, the Ohio Independent Dealers Association, my understanding is they don't have a similar program, that, that there is no auto crap. The MOU is, um, it's, it has been in place for a long time and a lot of attorney generals have continued it, but uh, it's not something that's mandated by the legislature. And so it's just a, it's a program that an AG could decide 
they don't want to participate anymore. They could undo that. Um, a future AG could undo that program. Um, and just to be clear, um, when we get a complaint, we're, we're faster than the attorney general or other programs because we're small and because we're responsive to our county citizens, right? So within two days of someone filing a complaint with us, they usually get a call back from us. We request a lot more documents because we don't tend to do, uh, we tend to require a lot of documentation to take a complaint forward. And then we make a phone call. We just call the dealers and we say, you know, if we have a car complaint, we'll call the dealer and we'll say, here we have this complaint. What can you tell us about it? And we try to work out, um, we try to work out some resolution that works. Um, so, I think for the OAG's office, they tell people they can get a resolution. It may take a month for them to do that. It may take longer. But we're a lot faster. And I just think there is some value uh, in having us try to resolve a problem with a phone call instead of having it get to, uh, to a higher level. We can always refer things off to the attorney general. And we do, often. Um, but the bulk of our car complaints are used car complaints, and when a new car complaint gets to us, it's a pretty serious one. Right, and that's the, the, the new cars were the, were the ones that had the agreement in play, I believe, with uh, the MOU that you referred to, and I, I don't think it's an occasional attorney general. It's every attorney general has signed off on it, is it not? Since what I'm I saying is my understanding from the attorney general's office is the uh, – that, that you have to be, to participate in AutoCAP, you have to be an auto dealer association member, and you have to then secondarily voluntarily agree that you're going to participate in the AutoCAP program. Right, and it's only for the new cars. That's correct. Yes. Yes, but it's, you said some attorney generals may be assigned up. I, no, I was I'm under the impression saying, that every attorney general. I meant all the, serially we've seen all the attorney generals in Ohio. Right. That do it, but they don't have to do that. And a new AG could come in tomorrow and say, or I don't know, maybe the current one would just say, you know what, we're done with that program. They could undo it. It's not a thing that's mandated by law for them to participate in, the attorneys general. But uh, I guess I'm, I'm just trying to go back almost 50 years or the since 1972 was a long time that, that every attorney general's have participated and it's handled it and it's worked for new cars and it's. Is solve the problems for all the new car dealers uh, and to put in uh, and for the customers and, uh, that are out there. If it, yeah, well, if it solves the problem for them, yes. And it, it's a program that works well, I think. But if we could head off a problem with a phone call beforehand, I, I think that's a better resolution and it's faster. I just like us to be able to make the phone call. That's, that's all. I'd like us to be able to go ahead and respond to our own residents when they run into trouble and just kind of have a conversation with the business and the consumer um, about that problem. Um, <clears throat> just to respond, I, I re respect the fact that this has been um, a tradition um, through uh, a different attorney generals, um, very different attorney generals for over a long period of time. Um, all of this was, however, certainly long before uh, the voters gave the uh, changed the government and um, passed the charter here in uh, Cuyahoga County in 2009, and before this body created a consumer affairs uh, department. And um, uh, and this certainly, as you know, is not targeted. None of this legislation is targeted at at, uh, at the automobile bill dealers association and new cars, um, but. Um, um, it is true that these things these things can occur, and I, I know somebody quite well who uh, had a, a new car recently and um, uh, and had to have the entire uh, engine replaced in the car, and um, and the dealer uh, was quite cooperative, uh, even though the car was beyond uh, the the warranty, the the mileage was so low. Uh, that the, the dealer was quite cooperative and, 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 and took care of that. So, I mean, my experience is that, that the level uh, that, that these people work at and that the, uh, the high level of, um, of uh, uh, the high level that they play in the community, uh, they're well-known, they're not 
uh, secret. They're not running around anywhere. So I have a high level of respect for them, and um, and that's that's the reason we took the the questions that they asked us to initially very you know very seriously, and um, and determined that um, we could um, we could we could we could see it their way on some on some of these issues. Um, but I'm I really um, believe that we would like to. Uh, from my point of view, we would like to hold this responsibility, give this responsibility uh, uh, to our um, our Department of uh, Consumer Affairs uh, through the authority of the of the county executive. Um, so uh, I would like to hear from others, but my uh, my sense is is that um, we've we've uh, we've done a good job of of, of responding to um, the com the concerns of the industry and of others. Uh, and I think that we're on pretty good we're on pretty good footing right now. Well, well, I my my concern is that this is one uh, group of of businesses that we've uh, that we're they're being singled out for a duality of of potentially going down two different paths. Uh, one of which uh, they're not going to be a duality of punishment as uh, as has been addressed, but you could have a duality of jurisdictional activities going on simultaneously with them, even though when, when the final resolution based on, on the amended language that's going to come forward later on uh, won't have two punishments uh, that ultimately could be could be administered. There will be uh, the uh, regulations and the, uh, uh, the processes could be going on simultaneously. And rather than, and uh, I did not hear uh, where one would uh, would actually not step aside completely. Uh, there'd only be one that, that uh, would be actually be punished as a result of the uh, anything. But uh, uh, if the AG is is handling the matter, um, would uh, would we actually step back and not pursue it here at the county level, or vice versa? Can I respond to that? Uh, the answer to that is. Yes, I have two investigators and a small budget, and we need to, I mean, we need to use our resources really well, right? So it doesn't make any sense for us to be investigating if we have another sister agency investigating. We work very closely with, with a lot of partners. The Attorney General's Office is one, Cleveland Consumer Affairs. We work with the Federal Trade Commission. A lot of that's through our scam squad work, but we have great relationships with them, and we do refer cases over. So I can't see how it behooves us, if they have an active investigation, for us to simultaneously be investigating. I, I just don't think that's a good use of our resources. I, I agree 100 percent and uh, that's why this is suggesting with those cases that are uh, already been working for the last 30 years why don't we take uh, a, a, the second position as opposed to the first position when 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 an issue of this nature would come up because exactly what you say you only have two investigators why not use their time and energy after some of the as some of the more egregious areas that you don't have a source of already following the action the activities that, that hasn't been working for 30 years. If you're, you're, you, you actually answered your own, uh, I no. believe, issue that says if you only have two people, why not use them? No, in, in it, other a phone areas? call for us, like making preliminary phone calls, trying to work out a mediation, that's, that's, that's something we do every day. And frankly, to give the auto dealers some other pathway to how people get resolution, that carves them out. That's not... I mean, that sets them apart from every other business that we deal with. When the, my understanding of how these cases go in to the AG is they're like, it's a new car, so because they're a big shop, they are, they're automatically handing off those cases when they have the MOU, we actually look at the documents first. I mean, we are looking at the documents. We're talking to the consumers. We're talking to the lender. We're talking to the auto dealer. It's, this is a, I think this is a good thing for our citizens. We're not asking them to wait. We're just, we're just stepping in. We're seeing what we can do. If we can head it off with a phone call, that'd be awesome. Unfortunately, the way um, I think that the auto dealers wanted to have this amendment made, it's, it's auto dealers who are licensed, regardless of whether they're new or used. And a used car dealer would never be able to participate in the auto cap program. They're, they're not. But what, what the amendment, as I see it, is saying is that lease cars, 
used cars, whatever kind of dealer you are, if you're licensed under that statute, then we just have to be hands off for car compliance. I, if this is about fairness, why don't we treat all the businesses in Cuyahoga County the same way? Like, we're not asking them to do anything they're not required to do already by law. They're required to follow the rules. They're <laughs> required to, you know, if you're selling something, say what it is. If you if, say what it costs, be honest about it. Everybody goes away. It's win-win. Everybody goes away. When there's a when there's a, a hiccup, when there's a problem, you know, it's better if we are able to get involved and get it resolved and do it in a speedy way and actually look at some of the details of the cases. I mean, you're precluding us from handling any car complaint. No, it's not precluding, it's just sequencing it. You, you already have a body that's already been doing it for 30 years. Why not use that body? And then if, if there is a problem, then have us come in at the second in the second position as opposed to being the primary. Because we don't do that with any other kind of business. <laughs> what hasn't been going on, you, you're, these other businesses, haven't, you haven't been doing this until this legislation on, on some of these We areas. mediate right now. We've mediated from the from since before I walked in this office. We call businesses, we try to mediate. Could I, would you sure. mind? Um, sure. Mike, um, uh, and thank you, I just wanted, Mike, could you um, review, um, you were in the, in the meeting, uh, could you review what it was that the, uh, what the Dealers Association wanted in the beginning of the negotiations, uh, the certain, discussions? Um, yes, I believe the original request, and let me, let me pull up the letter here, was that, um, that I, I'll just read this. Uh, we request that as an alternative to abandoning the legislation altogether, specifically exempt motor vehicle dealers with a BMV ND license, new dealer license, from being subject to this legislation. So they just wanted it carved out completely. That appears to be the case. That's how it started. Mm -hmm. And other things they asked for, we responded. Yes, I believe there were... Um, th that was the that was the deliverable request. I believe there were five items on their on on in bullet point form um, requested, and uh, four of those five items um, were incorporated into the proposed substitute in some form or fashion. Okay, I just want to establish uh, that you know we are trying to work with the uh, with the manufacturers, but we did. The, I mean, we did uh, we did want more autonomy, uh, and we wanted to uh, change our. Uh, our form of government, uh, and the voters supported that. Um, the council did pass legislation to uh, create a department of, of consumer affairs. Um, so we are simply being, uh, from my point of view, of course, uh, uh, you know, consistent with what our intentions have been from the beginning. And it seems reasonable to me um, uh, that this legislation has substituted um, would go uh, a long way toward uh, showing our respect for being willing to listen to what people have to say, and um, and if we think that they've uh, made their case, to to make some effort to recognize that. Uh, just to Mr. King's uh, a lot. was the request that to be exempted uh, because they did not want to have any oversight, or is it because they felt the oversight was already operationally working uh, in the best interest of? the state of Ohio for the last 30 years you know, under the control of the AG. Mr. I, Chair, can I object? <laughs> if that's, how does he know what they're thinking? Well, I'm, I'm asking what, what, what the I request I had to put my lawyer head on a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. We're going to all play attorney now. We have an attorney. We've got more attorneys in the room than okay. we got anybody else. All right. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> um, Mike, if you want to, if you have any response to that, that would be uh, one. One of the points that was made was that the the new dealers are currently subject to various regulatory bodies um, in in the state of Ohio. So okay, that they were already regulated, yes. and they felt to. You know, and, and that's a statement of fact, not necessarily a statement of, of opinion. Then okay, we'll go there. Okay, thanks. All right. Okay, uh, I'm not sure who was first. Uh, Council, I'm told uh, that Councilwoman Baker was first, and we'll go to Councilman Gallagher and whoever else uh, wants to chime in here. Um, Mike, if I may ask. So, you know, yes or no, is this a duplicate service? The AG does now offer this service. So for us to do it, it is we are both doing it. 
Am I right to say that? It is. It would give the county concurrent jurisdiction over consumer sales practices um, regulation, yes. So the, and I guess I can ask um, the person who gave testimony before. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. So given that this is a duplicate service, I mean, we're, we, were, we are proposing to do it, and the AG has been doing it, are you getting a flood of calls saying, please have a service for us for new car uh, complaints that come in because we are not being satisfied by the AG? Um, we, <laughs> we, of the complaints we get, there, I mean, we get more used car complaints than we get new car complaints. That would be fair. Okay. And um, we, although the AG handles complaints, we we believe we handle them faster. Um, we do. I mean, I, I guess what they, I'm asking look, is, look, the attorney I, general has like limited staff. They have limited budgets too. Right. Theirs is a lot bigger than ours. But um, they are looking for cases where things might cross. Um, like a county line, like they want to get a case that's that's across several counties, right? Because they're trying to be the Ohio Attorney General, right. and so with smaller cases may not. And this is not about cars, or I mean, this is in general, all of them. Yeah. If there's something that's just we see it happening with, say, inside the the county itself, that may not rise to the level where it's something that the attorney general wants to take, right? Well, I guess what I'm asking, though, is that are you hearing specifically from our constituents that they are having difficulty working through the AG when they have a new complaint with a new car uh, dealership? Not with a new car dealership, but we do have people who have gone to the attorney general who've gotten the standard, um, gosh, we can't get anywhere on this. Uh, you will have to go to small claims court, and those people come to us, and we often are able to resolve those. So those aren't are, auto dealer complaints, but those uh, that I know of, but certainly other kinds of complaints. So sometimes the attorney general will do the standard because they have a cut kind of a call center set up, and they'll get a dismiss. You know, just sorry, take your chances in, in small claims. Right. And if people come to us with that, we sometimes can affect a resolution. So I would not say. Our work is the same. So given that I think I heard you say that the new car concerns are limited, that if we were the second in, com in, in control there, that there really wouldn't be a flood of, oh, my God, I don't know where to go. It would be a very limited, if any, amount of complaints. And if there were any, we're there as a safety net for those to come back to us because they couldn't get the answers they needed from the attorney general. I mean, it's, I guess I'm just looking for, are we really, do we have a solution to something where there really isn't a problem? I wouldn't say there's not a problem. Like we have a case in front of us now where uh, a couple went in, this is a, this is a car dealership that sells both new and used cars, right? So they're licensed under that statute. A couple went there, they were test driving some cars. They said, uh, we, they said, well, we don't really know what our credit's like, so we kind of like to get an idea of what credit we qualify for. Um, and then they signed a bunch of papers. They test drove two cars. They ultimately went to another dealership, bought a used car there, and they were very happy with that. However, a couple months after they bought their car, they got a notice from a lender saying, hey, we haven't gotten your payment on your loan. And it turned out they were... They had somehow been taken out alone on a car that they test drove at the other dealership, right? So they never bought that car. They never left with it. When they called the lender, the lender refused to talk to them. When they called the dealership, the dealership said, hey, it, we got a signed contract. If you're not happy with your loan, talk to the lender. So they came to us, and our investigator was able to actually reach the car dealership, the general manager, and say, uh, and they, they said, no, we got a signed contract. And we said, they didn't leave the lot with the car. Yeah. So uh, so through working with them, they I mean, they, they did their investigation. The, the general manager did the investigation. He found out 
that three days after that couple left, they sold that car with another loan to somebody else. I mean, they got two loans, two deals on a car, and, and we were able to walk that back for the most part. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, that, if I may, that sounds like a highly unethical practice. That yeah. That, right. So I would think that whether they contacted you or they contacted the AG, that that is a highly unethical practice that either one of you, I think, would have been able to manage. I, I would hope that the Attorney General's office would recognize that you can't be enacting loans without the permission of the person who is a I prospect think for a car. I guess what I'm saying is that if, if they went to the AG for that example, and they, the AG just said, I'm just too busy, I can't possibly manage this, it's a small time issue, then they could come to the county and say, I tried the AG, didn't get anywhere, can you help me? The Attorney General, I mean, they're great partners of ours, and they've been very supportive about you know this legislation. So uh, I... Uh, I think sometimes because of the volume of complaints they get when there are multiple parties, they have more difficulty handling those than we do. I, I, I do think that we do a better job on multiple party kind of un, untangling things. Um, you know, what happened to this car dealership, I don't know. I can't believe that they would actually want to give a, put two loans on the same vehicle and have two contracts. It sounds to me like someone made a really, really, really I, I just don't know. We haven't sorted all of this out. Yeah. But, you know, we have, I mean, when people come to us, they really feel boxed in. And did they go to the attorney general's office first? I, I, no, they didn't. They came to us. But that's not a, that's not a deal that would be resolvable un, under AutoCAP, right? They're a new car dealer, but it's only for new car deals. These were used. So, uh we're, I mean, we're providing a service to our residents. We, we're, if, if, I guess if that consumer, is what I'm trying to say, is that that consumer had an issue and went to the attorney general and the attorney, or came to you and said, hey, we've got an issue, you would say, well, here's the person to contact at the attorney general's office. If you're not satisfied with how it is that you are being treated, then come back to us. But they're the first in line and we are the second to make sure that your voice is heard. What is the, I guess I don't understand why we need a duplicate service for the first time out when we already have something in place that it doesn't sound like we have a lot of complaints, if any, on that level. I don't understand why we want to say to an entire industry, you know, hey, we have a law that, that basically says you're supposed to do business honorably. But, you know, not so much you guys. I think we want to impose the same rules across everyone. And I think however consumers can get their problem resolved, that's a good thing for them. These people, I mean, when they, by the time they get to us, they are so frustrated. They've tried to resolve it. They have. They've been through, you know, calls. Call, you know, they're calling everyone. They're trying to get it resolved. And, it's, it's a great service for us to just be able to resolve it. I don't understand why we would want them to go to a process that takes longer. And sure, if, if we refer it over, we can always refer it over if we can't get a resolution. But why not let us have just the chance to tackle it first? Well, yeah, that's about all I can, I can do. Uh, director, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The arguments that I'm hearing here, I would half expect the Attorney General to be here arguing against this legislation, uh, the way it's been presented. And it's um, also presented who's first, who's second, leaving out the fact that there's small claims court. So, you know, so are we jumping over the small claims court? It seems to me this is just new, another tool in the drawer. The new car dealers are upset because there might be another tool in the drawer, but I don't anticipate them having to deal with this, considering the new car dealers today are, since 1974, way different. It's, it's consumer-oriented. Their reputation is everything. 
a complaint to the Better Business Bureau is, is considered death to them. And quite honestly, if I'm a consumer, I'm not going to the Attorney General. I'm not going to you. I'm going to court. And that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. But that would be my choice. If you're telling me you can, you, you can at least have more of a personal uh, touch on this, and, and these are our constituents, um, I guess my question is to anyone in this room, what, where's the harm here? Anybody in this room can answer this. Where is the harm that this legislation leads us to? And, and I'll leave it up for anyone to answer that, because I can't see any harm in affording a consumer an opportunity, another way in which to deal with a problem. And that necessary. and I, I, I will bet you can't have more than a handful of new car con concerns. That's true. Most of ours are used car I, I mean, it's car so repairs. competitive, and they're so good. So where, where's the harm? And that's where I'm at. Thank you, Councilman. Um, just wanted to remind members who might have stepped in after I said this the first time. Um, uh, we are we are not voting on this. Uh, we are in a work session. We'll be voting on this in the regular meeting, which will begin in about 15 minutes, and we will have a further discussion um, at that time. Um, so, if uh, if anybody has any further comments, make them now. Otherwise, uh, we'll be discussing this pretty soon. And director, you could. Can you just share with us again, and you may have said it, but what was the auto industry's concern with uh, with this? What is was their take on on it? Well, they've been in communications with council, not so much with my department. Oh. Um, okay. But you know, generally, if we contact car dealerships, they're they're responding to our calls already. Right, the complaint right? is against them. Is that what you're saying? I'm sorry? No, I'm sorry. Continue. No, I, I'm just saying I, they've been communicating with Yeah, I mean, we, we actually, actually the question is better for, for either Mike or, or I, and that's that we met, Dale and I met with them because we had had a previous relationship as state legislators. Uh, they, had, they brought concerns to us, as GCP did. We, um, um, we, we have four amendments in our substitute uh, that uh, speaks to their concerns. Uh, then after that, they came forward with a with a with, with a with another with another concern, um, and um, um, I think we'll probably need to uh, uh, repeat all of this at the at the meeting again um, because we did because we did this about um, half an hour ago. Um, so we have been uh, re responsive to to their concerns. They would they would like to have, in my own words, not theirs. They would like to have a carve out for their industry, the new car dealers association, so that they not held to the same standards as everybody else. This legislation holds people to. Now we found some of their concerns that wouldn't that that seem to be fair. Uh, and ones that we could um, that, that I could propose to the to the council and feel comfortable that uh, the integrity of the legislation was was still there, and um, and th so this is a, a, a request that has uh, another another request for us to go um, further, and basically they want us to uh, um, just uh, aber you know just just concede our, our authority uh, when it comes to their industry to the Attorney General. They've had an MOU with the Attorney General for over 40 years, and, and that's held, but it's not state law. And uh, we, are, we have a, a, charter, a new charter government. We have a new Consumer Affairs Department, and we believe that we can best respond to people in this county um, uh, in a way that, uh, you know, uh, the Attorney General's uh, uh, who have to have to deal with uh, over 12 million people in the state of Ohio um, can't, uh, but we'll be working with them, uh, and um, and so we don't feel like this this I don't feel like this um, creates an unfair burden of any kind, um, and or is duplicative, and um, uh, it's um, 
It was, a, it was an attempt to, um, the, the whole effort has been an attempt to, um, after we received the legislation, after we heard it in committee, which you were, you were in committee, and after we passed it in committee, then we heard from, uh, we heard from people that had concerns. We sat down and dealt with them. We've, we have, we have fashioned a substitute amendment that we believe speaks to them, to their concerns, and I believe they know it, 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 it speaks to their concerns, but they're not quite satisfied, which is their right. And um, some of our colleagues agree with them. Um, and that's sort of where we are now. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, uh, in about an hour or so, we'll, um, we'll call the roll on this after you. we've had one more discussion. Okay. Again, I, I, I didn't see the harm. I was just curious as to what, how they presented it themselves. Um, but Okay. Again. Thank you, Councilman. Okay. Councilwoman Simon, and then I think we're good. Yeah, All right. Great. Well, hearing no, no other uh, comments, um, uh, the, is there any miscellaneous business? Uh, hearing none, the uh, work session is adjourned for 10 minutes. We'll reconvene for the council meeting.